Is there a $100 billion ticking time bomb sitting on the balance sheets of the biggest hyperscalers in the world? That may be the case. And it has to do with how these companies account for all of the artificial intelligence GPUs that they're buying and how they depreciate them over time. It certainly looks like all of these hyperscalers, Microsoft, Oracle, Google, Amazon, even Meta, are doing much better financially with the growth of artificial intelligence. But is there a massive cost that they're not yet realizing? I'm gonna dig into one thing I think we're gonna to need to watch over the next year or two in artificial intelligence, and that's how long do these chips actually last? A100s, H100s, now Blackwells. They may not be the long lasting durable assets that these companies have them on their balance sheets at. So I'm gonna dig into some of these numbers. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's start with why depreciation is important. Because this seems wonky, but this is a really big deal for tech companies. I'm gonna start with Microsoft, but this is really true for all of these companies because they're spending tens of billions of dollars investing in new infrastructure and CapEx to build out their AI data centers. Now there's multiple pieces of those data centers. You have to buy the land, you have to have the physical building, build that building, build all of the wiring and piping that goes into it. But a big chunk of what they're spending on is actually the chips itself, the money that they're sending to NVIDIA. I'll get to NVIDIA's numbers in just a second because that should put some context into how much money is going into these data centers on the chip side. But let's just look at what Microsoft is spending in CapEx and how that has changed over the past decade. You can see that in the past 12 months, they have spent almost $50 billion on capital expenditures. That is up from just $6 billion in 2015. For 2025, they are expecting to spend $80 billion, but that does not go directly on their income statement. When you spend money for CapEx, there's actually no impact on the income statement immediately because these assets are expected to provide value for a long period of time. So what companies do, and this is the way that accounting works, is you depreciate them over their expected life. So a building is gonna be depreciated over 30 years or 50 years. There are a ton of rules that go into what the depreciation schedule is for each one of these assets. There's the accounting side and then there's the tax side. I'm gonna focus on the accounting side because you start to get into taxes and then it gets much more complicated. But just for Microsoft, you can see that they have spent $49.5 billion in CapEx over the past year, but the expense that was on their income street, income statement related to depreciation was only $17.9 billion. That goes on the balance sheet like this. In red, you can see the gross property, plant, and equipment for Microsoft. Blue is the accumulated depreciation. So that's gonna be, I spend a million dollars to build a building. It has a useful life of 30 years. We're three years into that, and it's a straight line depreciation. So 10% of that cost has been depreciated. That's what that blue line is. When you sub subtract the blue from the red, you get the orange column that is the net property, plant, and equipment that Microsoft actually has on its balance sheet. Normally, that number is not a huge problem. The problem becomes when a company goes through and says, you know what, what's on the balance sheet is not actually representative of the asset that we actually have. And if that asset that you actually have is much lower in value, then you have to do a write down. So why is this important? And where do AI chips come into this? There are two things that are at play here. This is from Alphabet's frequently asked questions for investor relations. They talk about depreciation here. And they give some of the examples, buildings are depreciated over seven to 25 years, server equipment is six years, but they give this note here in January, 2023, they completed an assessment of the useful life of our servers and network equipment, resulting in a change in the useful life of our servers and certain network equipment to six years. So they increased it from five years to six years. And these are depreciated on a straight line basis. That means you're gonna take one sixth of the cost and that's gonna be your cost each year. Why is this important in AI? Because GPUs do not operate the way that a traditional data center server does. GPUs run much hotter, they are much more brittle, and according to a number of studies, this is a study by the University of California, Berkeley, an NVIDIA GPU lasts about three to five years. There's another one that says an AI, the A100 GPU lasts two to four years in the data center. This is a comment from a recent podcast that Ben Thompson did with Nat Friedman and Daniel Gross, so two leaders in artificial intelligence. He says, so you have a data center, which I think is depreciated over 30 years, and then the GPUs, I think, are accounted for in five-year depreciation, it's actually six years, but actually are unusable after about 36 months. Nat Friedman just responds, that's right. This is a really big deal, and this is a big deal because NVIDIA has sold almost $100 billion worth of data center chips in just the past year. So if all of those chips are being depreciated over five to six years, but they really should be depreciated over maybe three years, maybe it is 36 months, but at the very least, it's a much, much smaller number for depreciation than we have today. That is a really big deal. 
That means if this build out goes on and it continues to grow at the rate that it grows, we could see tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions of write downs in the future as companies realize and admit that the chips that they're buying today are really only useful for a couple of years and they're not useful for the amount of time that they have them on the balance sheet. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's go through the scale of these numbers for some of these companies. Now, to be clear, all of their capital expenditures is not going into buying chips. There's a lot of other pieces that go into it. There's also different use cases. So I don't want to conflate one problem that may be sitting on the balance sheet that is maybe 10% of the assets or 20% of the assets with something that's 100% of the assets. But I think this is getting to the scale that it's worth noting because of the size of NVIDIA's sales of GPUs. So let's start with Alphabet. Alphabet has net property plant and equipment of $175 billion. They are spending $49 billion and growing on capital expenditures and their depreciation and amortization is only $14.4 billion. So that's that gap that I think is gonna become problematic over time. At the same time, their margins have gone up. So the problem is gonna come here if they are under reporting the costs that go into generating their revenue. So their margins are actually being overestimated because they're underestimating depreciation. Here's the same information for Microsoft, $173.4 billion in net property plant and equipment on the balance sheet, capital expenditures far exceeding the amount that they are depreciating or amortizing per year. And look at those margins, they have marched higher over the past few years. We know Microsoft is one of the biggest customers for Nvidia right now. So are they underestimating the cost of actually running those chips? The final one I'll show here is Meta Platforms. Amazon's not really big enough in artificial intelligence yet that it's gonna really show up. Their balance sheet is full of all kinds of other stuff with their retail business. But Meta Platforms, I think, makes sense to look at $127 billion worth of net property, plant, and equipment, capital expenditures more than double the rate of depreciation and amortization, their gross margins down over the past decade, but they have been ticking higher over the past year or two. So again, are all of these companies underestimating the costs and the returns associated with their artificial intelligence investments? I think this is something that we need to start thinking about and asking about. If it's true that these A100s, H100s, Blackwells are not only gonna burn up because that's what happens with GPUs. They run really hot. If you ever had one of these high performance GPUs as just a personal computer or a gaming computer, they don't last forever. That's just the reality of that product. It's a very brittle product. And on top of that, they're being improved at such a rapid rate. People are so excited about the Blackwell chip because it's so much better than the H100 or the A100. So is it gonna be obsolete at a much faster rate than you would typically get in a typical data center product? These are reasonable questions to ask about the balance sheets and income statements of these hyperscalers. And I think this should be getting more attention in 2025 as we start to think about what's the actual payback from this tens of billions of dollars worth of investment. It may not be quite as good as it appears today. So something to keep an eye on. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.